Hey friends, it's Len here from 1A Auto. So for today's video, we want to talk about some common areas that you're going to find coolant leaks on a few different types of vehicles. It's not holding pressure. That's not good. One of the first engines that we're going to talk about is in a GM vehicle and it's a 3.8 liter engine. It has to do with the intake. We're going to go ahead and tear it down so you can see exactly what's going on. After that, we're gonna move along to a Ford with a 4.0 liter engine. That has an issue with a couple different things, one of them being the thermostat housing. I wanna show you that one as well. Aside from that, I have a Nissan Xterra that I'm gonna bring in here with a 4.0 liter engine. That's gonna have an issue with the radiator internally and it can cause some serious issues with the transmission, so we need to talk about that one. Aside from that, Subaru Boxer engine with a four cylinder. That one's gonna have an issue with some head gaskets and we need to talk about that as well. We've got a whole bunch of stuff going on, so let's get into it. Oh man, oh it's cold in this thing. Boy, I'll tell you what, I had this thing sitting outside for a little while. I had it running because I was trying to warm it up. As you can see, we got quite a bit of snow in the Northeast over the night. So of course, I wanted to start it up, let it warm up before I go ahead and hop inside of it because I know it's gonna be cold, and then I want to drive it in so I can continue with my diagnosis. Now, the original diagnosis for this was the fact that there was no heat coming from the vents, and they thought that they smelled maybe a little bit of a sweet smell coming from underneath the engine compartment, so it's something that I wanted to check out. Obviously, like I just told you, I confirmed that I have no heat coming out from the vents right here, so that's something that I want to diagnose because, boy, is it chilly outside. To get started, I'm going to go ahead and pop the hood. We're going to get under there and start taking a look. Oh man, as you can tell, there is a lot of smoke coming up off this engine, which tells me essentially that the engine is pretty warm, but for some reason, there's something burning off of it. Looking down here, I can see that there's a big oily mess down along this area. I need to confirm whether this is oil, which it definitely looks like it is, and or if there's coolant mixed in with it. Now these GM 3.8 liter engines have a known issue with coolant system that I wanna to talk to you about. But of course, what I'm gonna to have to do first is go ahead and take off this oil cap. Let's get this adapter off of here as well. Carefully grab onto this. We'll get this right out of the way. And now this is the issue that we're gonna start talking about today. This is your air intake system. Down underneath this, there's gonna be a gasket that leads down to the intake of the engine itself. So with that said, we're gonna to have to go ahead and start cleaning up this mess right here before we start taking this off. But before I even go ahead and take it off, I don't wanna just jump ahead to any conclusions. I'm gonna come right over here to the radiator cap. I wanna make sure that this is cool to the touch, which it is. So now at this point, I can carefully press it down. I'm gonna turn this counterclockwise and then carefully remove it up and away from my face. Now we're gonna inspect that radiator cap and as you can tell, this doesn't look good at all. This could be one of two things, or maybe two of two things really. There could be a mixture of oil getting mixed in with the coolant, which of course is gonna cause this mess right here. Or of course, maybe it had a coolant leak, which obviously it does because the radiator is very low. Or of course, there is the possibility that somebody could have tried to use some sort of coolant leak stopper. There's all sorts of different things that you can get for this. You can go to any type of store and more than likely you can find something that's supposed to seal up some sort of leak that's inside your engine. Now, typically these are more of a band-aid. It's not necessarily something that you're gonna wanna do for a long period of time. It's just essentially to get you off the road. But the problem with using some of this stuff is it can actually cause a little bit more damage than what you already have going on here. Yeah, it might stop the leak, so you can go ahead and get down the road after you add a little bit more coolant, and that's great and everything. But now you're gonna have all those little particles inside. And the particles themselves are gonna try to adhere to different areas, such as maybe the radiator cap along here, or even of course inside of those fins or the finned areas inside the radiator, or even inside the heater core. If that could happen, you could have a restriction of some sort. And of course the coolant isn't gonna be able to flow properly. If the coolant can't flow through your radiator properly, you're gonna have an issue where the engine's not being able to cool down properly, and you might have overheating situations, especially if you have a low radiator like this one right here. Otherwise, if the heater core itself was plugged up, which is gonna be located behind this area, that heater core looks a lot like a small radiator. It's about this big generally, has a couple tubes that go into it, and essentially there's supposed to be an inlet. The hot coolant circulates through that heater core, which is supposed to be inside the passenger compartment, goes ahead and goes right back out into around to the engine and then obviously back around to the radiator. The specific way that it goes can change varying on the vehicle itself. So with that said, essentially that is something that we want to pay attention to if we don't have any heat inside the vehicle because if somebody used some sort of stop leak and they plugged up that heater core, that's going to cause another issue. 
But where we don't have any coolant inside the radiator that I can see here, any air that's in the system as well will also cause an issue. Because of course, if there's air bubbles that are getting stuck or air pockets trapped inside of the heater core in there, that air isn't going to heat up as much as the coolant. So you're going to find that you have cool air that's flowing around inside of the passenger compartment getting circulated by your blower motor. That's something that's a little bit worrisome, so it's definitely something that we want to check out. I'm not necessarily so worried about that because in this video, I essentially want to go over different places that you can look for on a couple different types of vehicles so you know where to start looking for typical or common coolant leaks. So let's go ahead and start pressurizing this right here and we'll have a look to see what's going on. Now I've got one of these pressure testers right here and this is pretty much one of the most basic tools that you can get for diagnosing a coolant issue. Of course you can run the vehicle with coolant in it and of course the pressure that's going to build up from the coolant expanding should start coming out of any known leaks that's on the engine, the radiator, or of course the heater core or anything the like. But for me in particular, I always like to use something like this. That way there I can go ahead and get up to the pressure that I want to have, which is approximately after that 15, but lower than the 20. You never really need to go any higher than 20 PSI because we don't want to damage any gaskets that are in the engine that are still good. With that said, I'm just going to go ahead and get my tool on here. Get this thing. You want to make sure this is nice and tight. Lock it down. Now we're going to go ahead and pump this up and essentially we want to at least get up to the 15 like I said, but we don't need to go higher than the 20. Okay, so I'm in between the 15 and the 20 here and I can kind of hear a little something. A little bit of a gargling noise and I definitely hear some dripping. Of course it could be from melting snow, but let's take a look under here. Ooh. Okay, so this mess right here is definitely not water. I can see that it has like a yellowish hue to it. Coolant can come in different colors. You can get green, you can get yellow, you can get pink, you can get purple. You could, well, pretty much get any color you want, really. Um, but this one in particular has that color coolant in it, and it's definitely not the color of melting snow. So what we want to, of course, do is diagnose that. Now that looks like it's coming from the front right here, which would indicate to me that it's more than likely a radiator issue. There are vehicles that commonly have issues with radiators that we're gonna talk about a little bit later in this video, one in particular that I actually owned. But for this one in particular, I don't wanna necessarily stop just with the radiator, even though I can see that that's where it's leaking down along the bottom. The common area is gonna be this area, so let's start talking about this a little bit more. Now at this point, I've lost pretty much all of my pressure, so I know I definitely have a leak. Obviously, we saw what's coming from the radiator. That's probably the majority of the issue, but I never just stop with what I can physically see. I always wanna continue and make sure that I do the diagnosis properly. So like I said, I just wanna show you a couple places on this particular car. Let's go ahead and hop over to the passenger side over here. There's one spot that's kind of out in the open that you should be able to see fairly easily. Looking right underneath the intake here, you can see that there's this plastic elbow. This elbow right here is one of the most common areas for these uh, GM 3.8 liter engines to leak. Essentially what happens is, is the plastic itself gets dry and brittle. It tends to crack generally close to one of the areas that it connects into either the engine or even down into the intake over here. As you can tell, this one right here definitely looks like somebody probably replaced it already. It looks like it's in pretty good condition. And for some reason they decided to use something on here to make it seal. I can't tell what exactly this is, but there is actually supposed to be rubber O-rings on each side of this elbow right here that essentially just kind of plugs right in there and that should hold it nice and tight for you. This person right here was probably trying to make sure that it's extra sealed and then they don't have to worry about it again. The only problem with this is it's just gonna make it a big deal for the next person that actually has to take it apart. Um, it doesn't look like it's leaking there. So we're gonna move along to trying to get this upper intake off of here so I can show you one of the other places that leaks. Now looking at the top of this engine up here, I can see that I pretty much know for sure that I have a mouse in the house. Obviously it's winter time, everybody's looking for some place warm to sleep. And for some reason a mouse decided they wanted to sleep up on top of the engine here. I can see some mouse debris here and a lot of it up along the back area right here. Um, obviously, before I go ahead and take anything apart on the engine, I don't want to risk it and have anything fall inside the engine which could potentially cause some serious engine damage. It only really makes sense to go ahead and clean up as much of this dirt and debris as possible. So with that said, I'm just going to hit it with the vacuum real quick and then uh, we'll cut back into it. Obviously, before I start disconnecting all this up here, I'm going to go ahead and take off the main ground for the body here. Just get this right off of there so we can start disconnecting things. Let's see. Bolt out of there. There's my bolt. 
And here's my wire, it's separated now. We'll make sure that that's making no contact with the body of the vehicle in any way, and it's not. Now at this point, we should be safe to start disconnecting everything. Start popping these off of here. We only need to disconnect the ones that go up and over the top of this area. And of course you want to make sure you know exactly where each one of them goes. For me in particular, my wires are already marked. And then of course the coils where they're going to mount onto is also marked. So I'm not necessarily super worried about that. You could of course take a picture if you thought you were going to have an issue with trying to remember. That tube just broke. That's not good. Okay, this is looking pretty good. As you can tell, I've got a lot of my uh, connectors disconnected up along the top here. So we've got everything pretty much cleaned out. The next thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead and remove the fuel rail. Now for this, um, I have four bolts or nuts, I guess you'd say. There's two in the front, one here, one there. Go ahead and follow it over, find the same thing on the other side. And then we're just gonna gently try pulling this up. We wanna be very careful doing this because obviously I don't wanna damage any of my fuel injectors. But of course, if for some reason something did happen, now would be a perfect time to replace them. But with all this out of the way, I can see that I still have some debris, especially in the areas where the fuel injectors are supposed to sit. So I'm just gonna go ahead and grab some compressed air and my compressed air gun. I'm just gonna blow out the area just to confirm that there's no debris in the area before I go ahead and take this up. Now that I have all my mounting bolts out of here, we can give this a little wiggle. You can see that it wants to break free. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and continue on by lifting this up. And like I said, we wanna be very careful not to damage any of our six fuel injectors as we do this. Sometimes you might have to gently pry, but overall, if you just carefully start lifting up on it, generally it should wanna pop right out. There's that one. All right, so now we have our fuel rail out of there. You can see all of the fuel injectors. As you can tell, these are pretty much very filthy, um, but the main part that really matters is deep down inside this hole here. That's where the spray is supposed to come out of, so you wanna make sure that's clean and free of any debris. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and probably clean this down before I reinstall it, but now that this is out of the way, we can continue on to this area here before we can start removing this. All right, now that we have the intake off here, we can have a nice close look at exactly what I wanted to show you. Down along this area here, you can see that there's a whole bunch of dried up coolant crusties. That means the coolant's leaking out someplace. Inside of this port right here, and this one right there, there's a chamber where coolant's supposed to flow through. So if you were to look over at the engine where those areas line up, you're gonna be able to see that there's coolant inside of those ports, and it's essentially supposed to go up and through there and then back around into the engine. Now on these seals right here, especially this one, you can tell that it looks like it's extremely squished down and dried and petrified. It's also starting to separate a little bit. As I'm starting to pull down on it, I can see fluid moving around in the areas along the edges. That essentially tells me that this gasket isn't any good. Looking along this one right here, it looks as though it's actually even a little bit worse. This one's really starting to come apart. It's actually starting to uh, deteriorate along this area here. So that's something that you wanna think about. Obviously we go ahead and pull this off. We can have a look at it as well. 
But before we go ahead and do that, let's also talk about one of the main issues that these plastic intakes on the 3.8 liter engines have. Now right up on this area right here on the engine, this is considered part of your EGR tube. Your EGR is located right here and that's a generally part of the exhaust gas recirculation system. So essentially there's going to be some gases inside of your exhaust that's going to be flowing through and this valve right here is supposed to open up, allow some of those gases to come right back up through here, go into the intake and then of course get drawn back down into the engine to be reburnt. That's going to go ahead and take care of some of that emissions that uh, will generally be pushed out into the atmosphere. It's going to help get it reburnt so it burns out any of the existing contaminants that are inside of there before they get shot out the tailpipe. Now with the heat that comes through the exhaust, you can imagine just how hot that's going to be, especially up along the top of the engine here. So when this right here starts getting hot, that part is actually located inside this right here. So it's going to heat up the plastic. What happens with plastic when it gets hot? Overall, generally it's going to get dry, brittle, and it might even crack. So if you were to look along maybe this area leading that way, this area leading that way, or even this way, generally you might happen to see a crack if you had an issue here, in which case coolant could potentially be coming from one of these ports where it's supposed to be circulating through, either pushing into this area which goes into the belly of the engine, or uh, that could cause an issue where you have an internal coolant leak and of course it's getting burnt up in the engine or even if these seals were bad and the coolant was somehow making its way out and down this way which essentially you'd see coolant running down along the back side of the intake here or even along this side right there. All right, so we know what could happen right in this area here. I talked a little bit about this side of the gasket, but I'm gonna go ahead and take this right off of here because I wanna have a better look. I don't wanna just look at one side and try to say, oh, wow, well, it looks good or maybe it doesn't look good at all. Let's see about popping it right off. Okay, we'll go ahead and turn this over. And now along here is where those seals were from the other side that we were looking at. This side really doesn't look nearly as bad, but as you can tell, they do look like they're squished down a little bit. The other side was definitely, ooh, look at this one. That one's really squished down. But anyways, as you can tell, this gasket right here is a complete assembly. This you'd want to replace, like, all together, essentially. Obviously, you're going to have to clean this up. Um, other areas to look at on the intake, since we have the gasket off now, we have those ports, like I said, where the coolant's supposed to be coming through. So you want to look inside there and just make sure that you don't see any cracks in the plastic. Like I said, it could potentially be cracking and coming out one way or the other, or even somehow cracked and then leading into the engine inside this area here. If that's the case and it's leading in, once again, you're going to have an internal coolant leak. You're going to see some strange colored smoke coming out your tailpipe. If you have an external leak, that essentially means it's coming out and away from the engine and then generally running down in which case you might see a little bit of smoke coming from the outside of the engine, especially if it's coming down onto something hot, such as maybe the EGR tube or the exhaust in general. So if you do happen to find that you have any sort of discrepancy, such as a crack, or it looks like it's dry and brittle and starting to look dry rotted in any way, it really only makes sense to go ahead and replace the plastic intake here. There might be an updated version that you can go ahead and purchase, um, but when you do it, you don't necessarily have to replace the throttle body at the same time. That just pretty much unbolts. I just left it on there because all I'm doing is pulling this off, and it's just a couple extra steps, but it's not something that I needed to do for this video. So let's go ahead and talk about this gasket again real quick. The reasons why the gasket could potentially be squished down, like this one is right here near my thumbs, overall is because if somebody had this apart, which it looks like somebody has because this looks like it's aftermarket to me, if when they put this back together, maybe they didn't have or didn't feel like using a torque wrench. They just got in here with their ratchet and they started tightening everything down. It feels good. Let's go around a little bit more and just really reef down on it, especially in this area because of course you got the coolant tubes and you got everything else. So people are going to try to tighten things up until it feels like it's nice and tight. If that's the case, you could potentially be causing a lot of stress on your gasket. It's going to squish them down like this. It's not going to make a good seal and more than likely you're going to have a leak of some sort. Okay, so we talked a lot about the plastic intake that sits up along the lower intake, which is this area right here. You got everything that you pretty much need to know about that, but what you don't know about is what's underneath this right here. So I'm going to go ahead and start taking this all apart so we can have a look at what's going on underneath there and of course talk about another possible place where you might have a coolant leak on this 3.8. So at this point, I'm just kind of looking. I want to make sure I have everything disconnected from the intake. I've got the EGR tube out of there, all my wiring's disconnected. Now the next thing I'm going to have to do is start removing the bolts that hold the intake down. 
So on this one right here, there's gonna be one that's located in the corner. I'll just go ahead and go through all these and you can just watch it. So now that I have all the exterior bolts out of here, I remember when I was looking at the top of the plastic intake, it mentioned something about a hidden bolt. It had something saying that right along this area and then something along this area. Odds are you probably thought that that was for the plastic intake itself and you were probably thinking, what are you thinking? It's out in the open, what's the big deal? Really, it's because down inside this area right here and over in this corner over there, there's actually two hidden bolts. For ours in particular, we had quite a bit of oil inside here, so I just went ahead and cleaned it out. And now we have a nice clear view of them, so I can start removing them. Now that I have all of my mounting bolts out of here, I'm gonna come right over here to the thermostat housing. Generally, I just kinda of grab onto this. I'm gonna give it a little shake. Essentially, I just wanna break this piece free from the engine itself. There we are. I got a little bit of movement coming. Now you're gonna notice that on this side of the 3.8 liter engine, there's gonna be that elbow tube that I was talking to you about. So this part's generally gonna be the hardest part. Essentially what we need to do is just carefully start lifting this up and then once we start lifting it, we also need to be trying to slide it away from that tube right there. So I'm just going to try to get down in here, Let's see if I can start lifting it. We're going to remove this bolt right here as well. That should help us out. get this tube off of here. Ooh, doggy, that was tight. Okay. Switch wrenches. Okay, get that little wiggle. get this EGR tube out of here. Okay, I've got plenty of room coming from this area now. Now the next thing we need to do is, since I'm not trying to break this right along here, or I'm being careful not to break it, I should say, I essentially just wanna try to uh, lift up on this. I'm gonna gently start pulling on it, and essentially we just kinda need to pull this right out of either the intake or this area where it goes into over there. But more than likely, in the intake is where it's gonna try to come out. Let's get this thing rocking. Try to get it to break free here. There we are. Okay. Let's see if we can get this up and out of here. Ooh, doggy. All right. Now that I have the intake off of there, we can have a nice clear look at our gasket area. Now this large rectangle area here is where the air from your intake is supposed to be coming through. And you can tell right up along this top area here, the gasket's damaged. It actually almost looks like it's burnt a little bit in some way. And of course it's ripped apart. So you're not gonna have a good seal along this area. There's very good odds that you're gonna have some sort of vacuum leak or running condition. Over in this square right here, or small rectangle, you can also tell that this seal is bad as well. It's kind of a little waffled off to the side like that. And you can see that it pushed right out and it damaged the plastic here, a little bit there, and then even up here. This gasket is in very poor condition overall, and I'm surprised that it didn't have more of an issue than what it already has. This one right here doesn't really look too bad. Inside of the coolant jacket, you can see a lot more of that gunk that I talked to you about before. Um, putting any type of sealant inside of your cooling system, overall, this is what happens. It's gonna be everywhere inside there, it's gonna make a mess, and it could potentially wreak some serious havoc inside of your engine. Looking at the seal, you can see that it's starting to peel down right there. This is in very poor condition. And in all honesty, I even made my way over to this side. I've got the same issue up along the top here. This one's starting to separate. Down in here is just completely full of gunk. Down over here, this coolant port is pretty much shattered. The plastic's broken right apart. 
Over here, this doesn't look too bad, but overall, if you find even one discrepancy, it doesn't matter where it is on any of this gasket, you need to replace the whole thing. And also, seeing as in you already have it all apart, it really only makes sense to replace the gasket. You're not gonna go ahead and put anything back together reusing the old gaskets. If for some reason you might have missed that you couldn't see that this was leaking here or anything else, you could potentially still have a major issue. So once it's all apart, you're gonna replace the gasket anyway. I just wanted to show you different areas inside of this that you could potentially have some serious issues. Now, since we still have the intake off, we might as well also talk about this tube since right now it's out in the open. When we were looking at it with the intake still in there, I could see that it looked like somebody put some kind of gasket maker or something gray all along there. Overall, they were probably trying to seal it up. Maybe they had an issue with this plastic tube. It got dry, it got brittle, it broke, it cracked, whatever might have happened, they had to replace it. To replace this right here, it's not necessarily the easiest job because you saw what it took to get to this point. And now all I would do is just go ahead and grab onto this, give it a little tug, pop it out of there. There it is, friends. But they didn't want to have to do that again. It probably cost maybe $1,000 or maybe even more if they had somebody else do this for them at a garage paying 100 bucks an hour. So of course they're not going to want to go ahead and deal with it again. They just went ahead and put a little extra seal on there. But overall, this orange gasket that you can see right along here, or the O-ring, is the only seal that you should actually have to use on this. Generally putting these in, whether it's on this side going into the intake or even into this side over here, you're going to want to make sure that you use a little bit of grease on this. You don't want to use like wheel bearing grease or anything like that, but some, uh, some sort of like silicone paste, just a little bit. Even if you had to use a little bit of motor oil, you can go ahead and do that, but some sort of lubricant is going to be good overall because as you start sliding it in, it's going to be a tight fit and you want to make sure that this gasket doesn't roll over, rip, tear, or anything the like. If it did, more than likely you're going to have to take this all back apart again. And as you can tell, that would be a complete nightmare. Now at this point, I've got a lot of work to do. There's still a little bit more here I want to see. I'm going to go ahead and pop the gaskets right off just so we can have a little bit closer of a look. I figure, you know, we might as well. We're this deep in here. So I'm just going to go ahead and carefully start picking this off of here. As I'm doing this, I'm also trying as hard as I can not to get anything into the engine. Inside of any of these ports right here, if I was to drop some debris inside there, that's where my valves are. If the debris went inside the valves and got in between the valve and the seat, the valve's not going to be able to close properly or it might have an issue functioning. Once again, you're going to have a running condition. You're probably going to have a check engine light. And who knows, you might even need to take all this back apart again just so you can try to clean out whatever mess you might have happened to have made. So just be very careful not to drop anything inside there. This is going to come across this way. See if we can get this to pop up. Mm -hmm. This is popping off pretty easy. Can't wait to get a better look at this. Oh, yeah, let's have a look from the back side. Let's get this on the bench and have a closer look. This is actually where one of your mounting bolts goes through and you probably noticed when I was taking this apart, some of my mounting bolts had a lot of oil and gunk on them. Why would they have so much oil and gunk? Because they don't necessarily go into an open port in the engine that's threaded. Well, if you look at the seal right along here, you can see exactly how oil made its way right along here. It just kind of seeped right in, filled up this port right here. And of course, that's where one of my oily bolts was. There was multiple on this, but the more that you look around, the more that you can see where there would be an issue. This one right here is broken along there, and I don't probably need to go over every single spot. But if you just have a quick look at it, I'm sure you can find a whole bunch of different areas on this that maybe stand out to you that I don't physically see or that I haven't physically shown you either. As you can tell, this gasket's a complete mess. It's not something that you would ever want to reuse for any reason at all. This is something that you have to make sure that you replace as a unit. And lastly, let's just go ahead and put this up onto here. So it's pretty much in the original position. And as you can tell, this area right along here pretty much completely disintegrated so that this gasket right there wasn't necessarily making a good seal. And we probably had a leak in this area as well. This should actually be a piece of this, just like the other side right here. We're all done with this car right here for now. Obviously, I got to put it all back together, but I'm not going to make you wait around and watch me do that. So let's move along to a Ford Explorer. Now, right down in this area right here in the engine compartment on this Ford 4.0 liter engine, this area is considered your thermostat housing. Your thermostat's actually located in this area right here. Common areas on this that would leak, of course, would be up along the top. You can see that we actually have a lot of coolant from this area. Generally along the coolant temp sensor, if you can move it around like this, there's a possibility that the seal inside there isn't functioning properly. 
Also right here, there's another little plug. If either of these clips are missing, like I said, this could, well, that one just kind of came right off. But anyways, this could essentially just wobble around and the O-ring inside there could go bad. So that's something that's fairly easy to replace. But overall, it actually cracks either along the bottom base of this, where it goes into, or even if you were to look down along this area, right along here, sometimes you might even find that you have coolant only running down along the front and you don't necessarily see it up along the top. So it can kind of be misleading a little bit. If you see it leading along the front, it's because you can see along where my index finger is, there's kind of like a separation in between the top area of the thermostat housing and the, right here and the lower aspect. So if that ends up cracking, of course, the pressure from inside your cooling system, once it gets hot, it's going to try forcing that coolant out and you're going to end up seeing that you have a leak coming down here. If you were to miss that you had a leak coming down right here and you just happen to see a whole bunch of coolant down on the ground, you might actually misconstrue that and think that maybe you have like a head gasket leak or even an intake gasket leak. But this is definitely some place that you want to look right along this area here, up along the top, or even right along this forward aspect right here. Like I said, the thermostat is actually located inside of this upper housing area right here. So of course this is going to have to separate and if the gasket that's in between this area isn't right, you're going to have a leak. So of course what you're going to want to do is just try to pressurize it. Let's go ahead and turn this counterclockwise and we'll lift it up and away from our face just in case there is any pressure. Go ahead and inspect that radiator cap. There is common times that you might find that you have an issue with one of the seals on this and it might actually be venting. So if your radiator cap looks like this one right here, it's a good idea to just go ahead and replace it. This one's pretty old. I'll set it aside anyway. Now for this, I'm just going to use my adapter on it. Put that right on there. And get this on here. Let's go ahead and give this a couple pumps. That's not holding pressure. Whoa, that's not good. That looks like we found another coolant leak. Great. So now at this point, we know that we have several coolant leaks on this. We have the issue with the thermostat housing, which is the most common issue for coolant leaks on these 4.0 engines. But then I also happen to find that I had the issue with the radiator. So these are both coolant issues and there's something that you're going to want to take care of at the same time. To replace the thermostat housing, let's get into that first. We're going to want to get underneath the vehicle and go ahead and open up that petcock, which is the drain for the radiator. Once all the coolant's drained out of it, we can continue on up here. We'll disconnect the electrical aspect, the hoses, and then of course we can just unbolt it from the engine and we can lift this right up and out and then of course replace it with a whole brand new one. You don't want to just go ahead and try to piece this together by only replacing certain parts. Generally, it just makes sense to go ahead and replace the whole thing as one assembly. All right, now we talked about the thermostat housing being a very common coolant issue on these Ford 4.0s. We talked a little bit about the radiator. That's not necessarily as common on the Ford 4.0s, but it is super common on a Nissan Xterra. So I'm going to go ahead and get one of those into the studio so we can talk a little bit more about that. Now on this Xterra right here, let's we'll go ahead and pop up the hood so we can have a look. The radiator, of course, is located right in the front as it is on most passenger vehicles. And what can actually happen with these is it can actually go bad internally. And when that happens, you actually have hot coolant that gets forced into your transmission fluid, which of course can cause some serious damage to the transmission. I'm just going to go ahead and close this hood and let's have a look at the radiator. Now on this radiator right here in particular, we have a nice clear view of where you can see that there is actually a coolant leak. This is going to be something that's common on most vehicles that have a radiator that looks like this. As you can tell, the fins just kind of start rotting away and what happens is it breaks down and then you start getting a little bit of a seeping and generally that's going to come from in between this area here. But as you can tell on this one, it's actually up along the top area. It's just something that I wanted to note. But the main aspect of what the issue is with these is actually located inside of this chamber here. So I'm just going to go ahead and tear this thing apart so we can have a look at the inside. Now at this point, I'm just going to use a screwdriver and I can start getting underneath this area here and start separating these two parts. Just keep in mind, once you start doing this, there's no turning back. Okay, so now that we have this apart, we have a nice clear view of this area right along here. Now this area is where your transmission fluid is going to be. You can tell that I have a little bit still coming out of this. 
What can commonly happen on these is this actually ends up deteriorating and coolant can make its way inside this tube. Once it makes its way inside here, it's gonna make its way also into the transmission like I said before. Now, if that happens, you're gonna find that you have what looks like a pink milkshake inside of either the radiator fluid, the coolant, or even the transmission fluid when you go to check that transmission fluid. You might also happen to notice that you have an overheating condition inside the passenger compartment. You see that that heat range is going right up into the hot zone. You might also notice when you're trying to drive, the transmission feels as though it's slipping. It doesn't want to drive forward or maybe even has a hard time driving backward. Now I know the sound of having hot coolant mixing in with your transmission sounds like a very bad thing. And honestly, it kind of is, but it's not necessarily the end of the world, assuming you catch it fast enough. Now, of course, those symptoms that I mentioned where you had a little bit of an overheating condition, that's very bad. Hopefully you turned off the engine fast enough and you didn't cause too much damage. Other than that, if you were driving and you found that your transmission had that issue where it was slipping either in drive or in reverse, once again, if you catch it fast enough, generally you can get away with a simple fix. Overall, the fix for this would be, of course, you'd have to replace that radiator. You wanna make sure that you replace the whole thing with a brand new one. Aside from that, you wanna make sure that you completely flush out that transmission fluid. The fluid that's in there needs to be replaced and you need to make sure that you flush it. You can't just go ahead and drain out the fluid that's in the pan and then go ahead and fill it back up. You need to flush it because any coolant that made its way into that transmission has been circulating around in the valves and any belts that's inside there. Coolant on the rubber belts that's inside of there could cause some serious issues such as maybe swelling or the like and you might still find that you have transmission issues. After that, you'd want to go ahead and take it for a road test. Assuming you don't have an overheating condition and the transmission feels fine, you should be good to go. Now obviously if you wanted to, for good measure, you could also do a second transmission flush on this. That's just going to help ensure that any of the coolant that might be up inside that transmission after you've driven it around, it probably made its way down into that transmission fluid, circulating around a little bit more there and then when you go ahead and flush it out it should get all the rest of it out of there once you put back in the brand new fluid once again go ahead and take it for a nice road test we'll go with the assumption that it drives perfectly you don't find that you have any slipping coming from the transmission and the engine temperature seems perfect you should be good to go in extreme cases or cases where the transmission fluid's been contaminated with the coolant and it caused some issues with the transmission there is a possibility that you might actually have to replace the transmission of course, that's a worst case scenario because transmissions on these Xterras are fairly expensive overall and putting them in isn't necessarily the hardest, but it's also not necessarily something that I wanna do in the driveway. Other areas I can think of to look for coolant leaks on this particular vehicle, of course, if we were doing the radiator, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you check all of your hoses once you remove them. Otherwise, you can just carefully grab onto them, give them a little squeeze, make sure they're soft, pliable, and they don't look like they're torn or worn in any way, like maybe they were rubbing up against something or something kind of tore into it in any way. You're going to have an upper hose, a lower hose, and then you might also have several other, other hoses on the engine itself. Other than that, if you follow the engine all the way back to the firewall, generally on the passenger side, you're going to be able to find where the heater core hoses come out. Now on these hoses, you can tell on this one, somebody already tried to fix it, but whatever they did with the clamps really isn't holding it very tight. And just having the minimal amount of pressure that's on this, it's already starting to seep out around this area. That's something that you definitely want to pay attention to. And now we're going to talk about a Subaru four cylinder boxer engine. Let's come right over here. Now on these Subarus, they have what's known as a boxer engine. And essentially, instead of having a regular V like this, where your pistons go like that, they're gonna have pistons that essentially go side to side just like this. Come on over, have a look. Now looking right along the side of this engine right here, up along the top, I can see a little bit of moisture right underneath this intake area. Now this is gonna be a common area to have either an oil leak or even a coolant leak. It's a little bit hard to see from underneath this area. So how about we do something a little bit better? We're gonna get underneath the vehicle where we'll probably have a little bit better of a view. From underneath the car, if you were to remove this shield right across here, you can look along either side of the engine and you're gonna be able to find the area where the gasket is between the head and the engine block itself. Typically, that's where you're gonna be able to find this leak. It might look a little bit like oil or even coolant. So I kinda wanted to bring it up. But since it's a little bit hard to see, even from under here, let's have a closer look at it on the ground. So now here's half the engine down on the ground. The other half would be over on this side. This part right here would be the forward aspect towards the front of the vehicle. And down along this side right here would be where your valve covers are. You can see all your valves right along this area and of course the spark plug tubes. Now what I'm gonna do here is show you right along this area. This is the head gasket area where there should be a gasket in between. This is the main area that I'm talking about for this problem. So I wanna go ahead and show you. We'll go ahead and pop that apart. We can flip this up and you can have a look at exactly what's going on. 
right along this entire area right here, you can tell that it has a little bit of gasket residue on there. This is going to be super important that it has it. There should also be a gasket that comes along this area as well. Essentially what happens is the coolant is going to be inside of this coolant jacket that you can see that goes around these cylinders and it's supposed to help cool the cylinders because of course inside of here you're going to have the piston going up and down due to the spark and of course the gas that's inside this area. So it's going to get very hot. It needs the coolant to keep everything nice and cool. Now if the gasket that's supposed to come along this area here was damaged in any way, you could potentially have get, uh, coolant rushing into where the cylinder is and of course that's going to get burnt up inside the combustion chamber and then shot out the tailpipe and you're probably going to see some smoke. Now if you had coolant that made its way from inside this coolant jacket area and went out this way, that would be an external coolant leak. Either way, having a coolant leak, whether it's an external one leading to the outer aspect of the engine or even into the engine where the pistons are, it's not going to be any good for the engine, especially if it's an internal leak. You could potentially cause some serious engine damage, so it's something that you definitely want to take care of. If you see smoke coming out that tailpipe that doesn't look normal after the vehicle has been warmed up, the head gasket's a very probable cause on this particular type of engine. Now to do these head gaskets on this Subaru Boxer engine, it's not necessarily going to be the hardest job you've ever done but it might not necessarily be the easiest either. To do these head gaskets, you're gonna to have to go ahead and take the engine right up and out of here. So there's gonna be things you wanna think about. There's gonna be parts that you want aside from just the head gaskets, such as maybe other gaskets or other things such as maybe even a timing belt or a timing kit. You're probably gonna to wanna to replace the water pump and a couple other miscellaneous things along the way that I don't probably necessarily need to get into. I just kinda of wanted to tell you about the head gaskets being a particular problem on the Subaru four-cylinder boxer engines. We talked about a whole bunch of different vehicles with a whole bunch of different problems, all coolant leak related. Every vehicle is going to have its own problems. There's a lot to talk about. So we got plenty of stuff to talk about for future videos. So make sure you subscribe and of course like the video if you found it interesting, something appealing, and share it with any of your friends that you think might help them out. I got to get back to work on getting this thing back together so I can get it out of my studio and get prepared for our next video. Make sure to tune in. Thanks.